What's up guys, we're back with another Worth It or Not, where I look at your cards and let you know if they are worth it or not to send in to get graded. So I already recorded this video earlier, and that was before the live stream when you guys told me, I can only hear this out of one ear in my headphones. I had to fix that, then I realized I recorded a video like that, so we're just re-recording it. We're gonna re-record, this is for you guys. We do have a quick giveaway. I'll be giving away these three cards. All you have to do is like this video, be subscribed, and let me know what you think is worth it or not, and if I was right or wrong and some other things, or just whatever you think in the comments. Worth opening the heavy, one booster is 12.95 grams. The other one is 13.05 grams. Hashtag worth it or not. So these are first edition Metal Raiders packs. We don't know if they're from the original box or if they're not. So he may know the poster of this. He's going to know, did I get these from a sealed booster box or did I get them randomly off eBay or something like that? Because you can weigh these packs, but if you don't have the original box with all the other weights of the other packs, you're not going to get a super accurate reading. And might, one might be heavier than the other, but they might both still be light. The first time we did this video, I looked up some prices. It looks like they're about $300 on eBay. $300 supposedly for eBay unweighed, which means they say they're unweighed, but you don't really know if they're unweighed or not. I looked at a ton of the hollows as well, and the hollows in this set are absolutely amazing. Secret rares, Thousand Dragon. We got the Gate Guardian. Then we've got the Ultra Rares, Solemn Judgment, Barrel Dragon, Summon Skull, Beast Skull Dragon, Time Wizard, you name it. Nearly every Ultra Rare besides Seven Tills of the Bandit, Magic Jammer, and the Horn of Heaven. They still actually make your money back in 10, so even those make your money back. Some of the Supers are more than $300 as well. It's up to you. Do you want to take the risk? If you know it's from a sealed booster box and it's a little bit heavier, maybe go for it, or maybe you can find some other weights from the box. Or if they are not from the box, it's more risky. It might be a light pack, but honestly, you have a good chance if it is a heavy pack of making your money back if you get a PSA 10 and a lot of the nines actually would do as well so I think honestly it's probably worth it to go for it worth it or not Crossroads of Chaos Black Rose Dragon Soft Corners and Edgeware this is a first edition Black Rose Dragon so obviously that's a big price card even if it's not perfect condition so I remember this one having it has a little bit of silvering on the bottom and it does have a bent corner on the top or slightly bent it wasn't a big bend the back looked really nice that's right okay okay never mind there were scratches so yeah, this is the one where it looked super nice at first, and then there was a bunch of scratches. So these scratches would bring it down to like moderate play. So there's the scratches, the silvering, and the, the slightly bent corner. I would call this one like moderately played. So at that point, it's not really worth sending in and actually making any money off or any increasing the value at all. I really like Ghost Rares Raw, so I think this would be a really cool one to have like in your binder. Or you could even sell it raw because it's an expensive card, even in moderate play. I would say for this one, it's not worth it to grade it. Request for Ruxin Q&A videos. I just think it would be cool for Ruxin to answer Q&A about the hobby and collecting. Kind of miscellaneous questions that aren't worth it or not. I think it'd be a great resource for people new to the hobby like myself. So if you guys are interested in something like this, let me know in the comments. Also, I think the Reddit is going to be more of a not just worth it or not and not just the collection showcase, but maybe a mix of some and then maybe some questions. Obviously, we're hitting up a Q&A video right now. We're answering a question. So I think we'll add this in in the future. If you guys like that, let me know in the comments. Worth it or not, one of these cards in a local auction, under $20 for all. Is it worth grading them now? All seem to be minty except Blue Eyes by Dragon and DDS. I remember these. Two of these are in good condition. That one has a couple of scuffs. This is the one that really surprised me. But the Spellbinding Circle, the front looks pretty good. And then the back, you guys see that? There's a ton of scratches and scuffing. Maybe he didn't know that those make it not minty. But to me, minty means like a 9 or maybe even a 10. But something like this is at moderate play. Because I think there was actually a slight bend on the card as well as moderately played on the back. Definitely not worth grading the Spellbinding Circle. Then the Winged Dragon of Raw is pretty nice on the front. And the back had, I think it had one small thing. Yeah, right there. Right there, there's a tiny scuff, but honestly, this could maybe get a nine. And then the last two he said are not minty. The Blue Eyes White Dragon and the Dark Sage, if that other one was minty, these I assume are like in heavy played condition or something like that. You definitely don't send those in. You don't send in the Spellbinding Circle. The other two are eight to nine candidates. The Winged Dragon Raw is borderline for $150. You might get the 9, and then it's probably worth it a little bit. And then if you get the 8, it's not really. So I would probably hold off on that one. And the Red Eyes, I definitely would because it's lower priced than Winged Dragon Raw. I'd wait for the $20 rate. The Winged Dragon Raw is one you maybe consider, but I would probably still wait for that one. So all these, I would say not worth it. Worth it or not, the Duelist Genesis Stardust Dragon Soft Corner. So the corner is bent up there. That one looks okay. Foils Decent has a couple of dots on it, which is not too bad. And then this bottom corner right here, you can see, has a big old ding on it. Not not very good there. And then uh, this side looks pretty good. Two corners in and of itself are going to do a big hit on the grade. You're going to be down at like a 5 or a 6 at best. Back looks fairly decent. It does have some scuffing, but it looks like it's not too much. But those two corners themselves, like one soft corner brings you down to like a 7 usually. But that big one on the bottom would probably knock you down to like 5, honestly. 
So you're looking at a five. It's kind of like the Black Rose. It's a really nice first edition card. I would probably keep it raw and keep it in your binder. Either sell it or keep it for your own collection. I don't think grading it's gonna bring you much value here. So I would say that this one is not worth it. Here's a collection flex I looked at earlier. It's Heroes and Ultimate Secret Rare, so it's just a really cool set of cards. You got the Nova Master, Neos Knight, I think the name is, the Aqua Neos, the Ultra Rare Air Neos, but that's a rare one because it's only been printed in Striking Neos. You got the Ultimate Rare Thunder Giant, Flame Wingman, it's a gold stamp. You got the Evil Hero Inferno Wing. You got the Grand Neos up here. All right, let's get to him. And then the uh, Magma Neo Secret Rare and the Elements Hero Chaos Neo Secret Rare. So just a really cool Elements Hero collection. Figured we showcase it as a collection flex. Worth it or not, 306-025 Blockbuster Soldier bought this for $180. Should I get it graded? It is beautiful. This is an ultimate rare Blockbuster Soldier. One of the coolest ultimate rares you can get. Everybody loves Envoy at the beginning. It's just really cool. I think this card looks really good. It does have a corner ding right there on the bottom left which would honestly probably knock it down at least two grades. The back, I don't really remember. Yeah, it's very bright video. It has a couple of things, so it's kind of hard to tell. There's a couple of things on it. That front ding, the front left, would really do a number on the grades. So honestly, I think this is, personally, I would love it in a GOAT deck. I think that's where it belongs, you know? That, that card just seems like a really nice GOAT card. I don't think it's going to bring you too much value grading a $180 card and getting an 8 or worse. So honestly, unless you just want it slabbed, I would not grade this card, even though it is beautiful. Worth it or not, this is my Ghost Rare Stardust from the Duelist Genesis series, Worth It. It has a little white tint on the top right corner, and I want to know if it's any worth grading. I can't really give you a good opinion if you only give me one picture and it's in a sleeve, so that's kind of the problem. He gave me, he said, it only has one white tint. As the guy said earlier, he said, it's a minty card and it was there's tons of scratches on it, so... I can't just like take their word for it and actually give them good advice without actually being able to see the card. So I would need better pictures of this. If it's in good condition, like it's a nine or 10 candidate, this is definitely worth it. If it's below that, like an eight or a seven candidate, it's not worth it. I, would, I can give you that. Worth it or not, LOB Blue Eyes White Dragon in a print, I believe, is reprint too, but it's absolutely minty. Besides the one little spot in the top middle of the card, as you can see in the video, still worth four grading. This is a reprint, as you can tell if you guys have seen a lot of the originals versus the reprints. It's a little bit harder if you can't. So you can tell it's an NA print if it just says LOB-001. If there's an E in front of the 001, then that's a European copy. EN is still an English copy for LOB because they were printed in Master Collection 1 and Forbidden Legacy in 2004 and 2005. That's where you could find all the ENs for LOB, MRD, and MRL. And there was other, or well, SRL technically. And then there were some other EN sets like LOD and all that stuff. But those are English sets. They were not European, which a lot of people think. This, for some reason, the video is not coming through super well, but I remember this one being an 8 to 9 candidate, so for a reprint copy, if it could get the 10, definitely worth it, but because it's max is like a 9, maybe an 8, then I would definitely not grade this one right now. However, this is probably a good candidate for the $20 grading. Worth it or not, I have a first edition Access Code Talker. Would it be worth grading? This is one of the most important posts I saw today. Here is why. A lot of people see an expensive card and they think, I should grade this. It can get more expensive. But what they don't think about a lot of the time is why is this card worth something? So Access Code Talker, why is it worth something? Is it worth something because it's collectible? Probably not. This card is worth something because it is very good in the game. If you guys have ever played with Access Code Talker, it's a really good card. That's why it's worth so much. Also, it did not get a reprint recently in the most recent tins. Everyone thought it was going to. Once they realized it didn't, it skyrocketed in price. Now it's like $160. So you see a $160 card, you're like, hey, maybe that's worth grading because it's so expensive. But it's not collectible. So a new card can be worth grading, but it needs to be something that's worth collecting. Let's say the new tin had a Dark Magician inside that was Starlight Rare. It was a just a regular Dark Magician, maybe a new artwork, Starlight Rare, something like that. But it's still worth grading because it's so collectible and a lot of people are going to want it. Access Code Talker, you can't use the card if you grade it. So you grade it and now the reason it's expensive is now unavailable for it. So because you can't play in a deck, you can't put a slab in your 40 card deck unless you rip out the whole slab deck or something like that. But probably not going to happen and uh, I don't think it's legal. I would like to see someone try and shuffle that. So it's very important to think about why the card is worth something. So Access Code Talker is definitely not worth grading.
Worth it or not, misprint ultra rares from the obelisk structure deck. Here's another one that I thought was super interesting. So misprints, they can be very valuable. People that collect misprints will pay a ton for a specific card that they want. Not necessarily these. I don't know how much these are worth specifically. I have noticed that misprint collectors, they just don't really care about grading that much. They don't want their, their misprints to be graded. They'll even buy stuff that's like bent in half. They don't really care about the condition a whole lot compared to other people, like other collectors of regular cards that are not misprinted. So... Honestly, that kind of led me to think maybe do not grade these for like 150 bucks because I think the value raw is going to be even better anyway. Collection Flex, this is more of a sentimental meaning to me. Both of these cards are my favorite period. I managed to pull these guys in 2019 and the IOC packs were around 250 a pack and I pulled both the CED and BLS from five packs. Forever an amazing memory and in my opinion, quite the flex. Definitely amazing and it's definitely better luck than I've had for sure. That's a super cool story. Maybe one day I can join you with the BLS. Worth it or not to grade this first edition LOB Dark Magician. Bought it for $500 two years ago. Could it be a PSA 10? So asking if it's PSA 10 is a good sign. Dark Magician centering looks pretty good. A little bit faded. When you see that and you don't see any scratches or anything on that light, that's really nice. You can see that as well. The front looks super good. I remember checking this out. The front is really nice. Very expensive card. Here is where the only real issue was. This scratch right here and a little bit of scuffing. And I think there's some scratches on the right. So that, I mean, this part looks really nice. This part looks, there's the scratches right there. And then some right there. So there are, is some light wear on it. But honestly, a very nice card. Back in the day, you would have had a much better chance of like maybe getting a 10. Today, you're not going to get a 10 on this. But you do have a chance at the 9, maybe the 8. And because it's a first edition Dark Magician from Legend of Blue Eyes, this is a card worth grading even at an 8 or a 9. So I would definitely send this in. Really beautiful card. Ask Ruxin, I've stumbled across the MetaZoo card game. I instantly thought it was kind of fishy by seeing these prices. Do you think it's a card game which just sells by hype with new surrounding Steve Aoki joining the MetaZoo team, which has literally, in my opinion, his opinion, not mine, no value to bring in except his exposure. This TCG feels more like a scheme than an actual game to me. Even the artwork reminds me of Chin Pokemon from South Park or some Pokemon parody from YouTube. What are your guys' thoughts? I'm not planning on buying this product. I'm just curious what this is about. So MetaZoo provides very strong opinions one way or another. MetaZoo people are very into MetaZoo and they don't want you to trash or say anything bad about it. The other side is people think it's a scam. They're like, why would you pay so much for a new card game? It's brand new. I think it came out last year. So it's only about a year, maybe a year and a half old. And the prices are very high, which I did originally make a video on how high the pre-sales or the sales were on the Kickstarter, which now they're way higher. So if you didn't listen to me and bought something, you actually made a lot of money. I don't want to like bash the game because I don't know too much about it. And I know that I will get flamed if I, bla if I bash them. And if you support them, you also get flamed. It's a controversial card game. We're just going to have to see what happens. If it's all investor hype or if it's really the actual core fan base keeping up the prices because the prices are really high honestly hard to get into something so new that's it's so expensive so i'm not going to really give a really big opinion about it because i don't really necessarily care about metazoo too much it, maybe i will one day maybe we'll maybe we will who see who knows maybe we'll get into it at some point i've never actually had the cards myself so i haven't had a chance to look at them so i can't really give a an opinion but you guys can let me know in the comments what you think about metazoo here's the last post worth it or not goes from the past bls soldier of chaos ghost rare no print lines or scratches on the foil and the back has has a really unnoticeable print line in the seventh pick and it has that gloss stuff on the top back of the card was wondering if it was worth sending to great express and i would want at least a nine okay so the front looks pretty good i think i kind of have to click through these so the back is where the real issues are on this card the okay the back looks good in that pick but here's an example of how a card can look really good in a picture without a video or other angle so you see this does this not look like a mint card do you see anything wrong with this card i mean absolutely nothing and you go to this next pick. Look at that. There's some of the shingly stuff that was on the ghost from the ghost from the past ghost rare. That's a lot of ghosts in one in one sentence. But yeah, if you don't have multiple pictures, make sure you get them if you're buying a card. That's really expensive, especially. Then there's more right here, and then I think right no maybe it was right here. Yeah, here's the print line right down that way. It's very slight print line that small. Honestly, you can you can get a ten. But with these shingle things, it's probably like an eight or a nine at best. So because it's only an 8 to a 9, and it's not that expensive of a card, and if it gets an 8 to 9, it probably won't gain much value. 9 maybe a little bit, probably not. An 8, you would definitely not make any money. So I would say keep this one either raw and sell it or keep it for your collection. Also, the first time I did it, there was a Blue Eyes Alternative Dragon here, and it's not here anymore. So 
Uh, I did say that one was not worth it, by the way, because I thought it looked like an eight to nine. This is very similar to the one we just reviewed, but I wanted to mention that because it was there in the last video and now it's not. I don't know where it went. So that's it for this video. I had to record it twice, but I think it's going to be a lot better, a lot easier to watch this time. It's not as fun to not react initially, but I want you guys to not have to like have your ears bleed because only you can only hear out of one ear, which is annoying. But before we leave, I have to shout out my ultimate supporters on Patreon and YouTube. So shout out to TCG Trusted Cards, Toe and Fo Show, Tomato Juice, Stanley, Mike Nance, and Mimic Gecko. Thank you guys for supporting the channel. And that's it for this video. I will see you guys later. Peace. <laughs> Shining Abyss. Ooh, the Revival Jam. Oh, and oh!